Hi everyone, uh, this is Rosa Corey with the Post Sustainability Institute, Democrats Against UN Agenda 21, and uh, I'm the author of Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21. And so we're going to continue our series that isn't in any order at all, so you can just watch any video and you're going to get the information that you've been looking for. Um, this is from uh, our website, Democrats Against UN Agenda 21.com. And uh, today we're going to focus in on one of the major funders of the change in your life, and that is the American Planning Association. So um, the American Planning Association was given a $5 million grant by the President's Council on Sustainable Development back in around 1993 or four to create uh, this book, the, um, which is called Growing Smart Legislative Guidebook uh, with Model Statutes for Planning and the Management of Change. And so model statutes, just think about that. The American Planning Association was engaged in creating a book that would be used by every single planner in the United States and around the world to uh, basically dictate new laws and rules for you in your town. And this is growing smart, it's smart growth. So that is why you see a lot of transit-oriented development, high, um, high density development in the center of your town often paid for with your tax dollars, needing a uh, high-speed rail, which is designed to sink your economy, and, uh, and also you know, high-speed buses. But the main thing is that it, it disrupts your existing town. It disrupts the main street of your town. You're going to see bump outs. You're going to see, um, you'll see all kinds of things. You'll see traffic calming. You're going to see median strips that make it harder for your emergency vehicles to get in and out. So uh, where did, you know, where'd the idea for this come from? Well, Growing Smart Legislative Guidebook with Model Statutes for Planning and the Management of Change got money from the Department of Housing, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Federal Highway Administration, U.S. Department of Transportation, um, the uh, EPA, Federal Transit uh, Administration and and uh, Department of Agriculture, and also they got money from private organizations, private foundations, private funders, including Siemens Corporation, which was of course um, you know one of the beneficiaries of the Nazi era, and the Henry M. Scoop Jackson Foundation, the Annie E. Casey Foundation. So uh, all of these groups are big pushers of Agenda 21 in every way. So let's, we're just gonna take a little look at a couple things here. Well, I think, please do go to this page. This is a great page on our website, Who Funds UN Agenda 21 Sustainable Development. And if you kind of scroll down, you're gonna get a little bit of deep information. It's not at all boring. It's information that you're gonna want and um, you're going to see where money came from. A lot of it came from the um, groups, the uh, federal agencies that were on the President's Council on Sustainable Development that gave out hundreds of millions of dollars in sustainable communities planning grants in the mid-2010s. And then you're going to see the International Council on Local Environmental Initiatives, ICLEI. They call themselves local governments or sustainability now, but they're not at all local. They are a, uh, an international organization, a global organization that has, of course, funders from all over the world and members that are your existing uh, government. So it's not transparent to you. So you might see some of the big funders on there, a lot of big money, big, big money here. And a lot of it comes from uh, government, U.S. government, as well as private foundations. And uh, then you're going to see American 2050, of course, America2050.org, which is no longer up uh, in the way that it was. You have to go to uh, the archive on the internet to find it. But look who the funders are there. Rockefeller Ford Foundation, the Lincoln Land Institute, Surdna uh, Foundation, and the Doris Duke Charitable Trust. A lot of these you recognize if you listen to public radio because they fund a lot of public radio. So uh, here's who was on the President's Council on Sustainable Development. Of course, you've got the um, you know, the, the federal agencies were there, of course. And then you've got 
uh, the environmental groups like the Environmental Defense Fund and the Sierra Club and the, Nat the Nature Conservancy. And then you've also got um, the uh, energy groups like Enron. Uh, you'll remember Enron. And uh, basically, you're going to see a lot of big, powerful groups on there, along with Sibagaygi, which is kind of strange. They're Novartis and, uh, of course, a drug company that now is involved with COVID development. So um, you're going to see your regional smart growth organizations. And any time you see Thousand Friends of, that is Agenda 21. Those are Agenda 21 groups. Um, Envision. Uh, like Envision Utah, Envision Minnesota, uh, Future, The Future We Want, uh, Smart Growth, anytime you see anything like that, you're looking at Agenda 21. And, um, and I've got a full list of partners for uh, the Smart Growth Network, which of course is a public-private partnership uh, that involves your uh, Environmental Protection Agency, along with lots and lots and lots of groups that you, of course, probably are giving money to all the time or even volunteering for. So, all right, so let's just get a little deeper into this because what we want to look at is... I'll show you in a sec here. We're going to see this. Um, what I did back in 2000 and 10 or 11, probably 2011 or 12 actually, was uh, I started looking into the American Planning Association because they were really working hard against us, people who were trying to get the word out about Agenda 21. They were actually actively working to sabotage any, any chance that we had to reach out to the public. And so uh, what I did was I joined the American Planning Association so that I could get a piece of their 12 week long communications boot camp. And uh, because I was a um, California certified um, general appraiser, I was able to do that. And also, of course, my designations uh, allowed me to, you know, to show that I was a professional and I was an affiliate so I could join I think it cost me something like $260. So I joined the American Planning Association. I got the communications boot camp webinar. Now the reason this is from 2011, the reason this is important 10 years later is because this stuff does not go away. These are the people who, who train the planners who are at the universities, who are in your planning department, at your city, at your county, at your state, and who are actually making uh, the rules that you're living by, who are telling you that, no, you cannot use your land, you can't use your water. So um, during this period of time, that of course, the Tea Party was very active, was going down to their city councils and their um, county supervisor boards, and they were protesting the membership in ICLEI and, of course, the changes to our our land use. And so this freak, kind of freaked out the American Planning Association, and they came out with this 12-week-long communication boot camp. And the whole purpose of it, of course, was to retrain planners so that they could fight us when we came to, uh, you know, when we were out there trying to object to what they were doing to our town. So... This is good. You can get this on our website. It's out there. It's on the website. It's, uh, it's called American Planning Association 12-week-long uh, communication boot camp. So the reason I'm showing it to you, I want to show you some specific things. First of all, they, they want their planners to recognize what we look like when we're out there and, uh, and how they can change, reframe the message is what they call it. So really what they're doing is they're changing the way that elected officials think about their constituents. Now what they tell you here is that planners are the guardians of the future and that uh, they protect the public interest, safety and welfare. So planners are, you know, you had no idea that they are the ones that ensure that elected officials make smart, efficient, and equitable decisions that work for the long term, and that they are leading, inv innovating, and inspiring the next generation. We just thought planners were, you know, civil servants who were back there doing whatever the elected officials wanted them to. No, it's actually the opposite. So uh, they, of course, reframed the way that uh, people are talking about sustainable development and then said everybody wants it. And then, um, you know, so they go through that. Now, um, this is an instruction for planners, remember. 
So they want planners to make sure that when they go in and talk to the people who, who are paying them, the elected officials and the people, that they understand what it is that we're up to when we go out there and we object to, of course, the remaking of our cities using our tax dollars, the, uh, you know, restricting us and being able to use our land and our water. Of course, there's freedomadvocates.org. They were our partner in suing to stop um, the... Um, Plan Bay Area project. So they want us, they want the planners to know that we are just a bunch of, you know, people who are out there who are trying to disrupt everything. We hate zoning. There's John Bush. You may recognize him. He's certainly grown older as all of us have. And a lot of us have been fighting this for a long time. So, um, all right. So what they're trying to say is that they want planners to reach out to groups that are likely to cause a confrontation in advance. So I, I have been invited to go and meet with the planners in advance. And what this is, has nothing to do with you making an influence on those planners. The planners are there to get information on you in advance, to find out what you're gonna do, to read your stuff so that they can then um, indoctrinate and inoculate the elected officials against you. So, and that's exactly what they say in here. Um, they want planners to reach out to groups. They want to have meetings with the, with the groups. That's us. They, uh, look, they don't want to change our minds. They want to collect our input. They want to get our information so that they can read it and find ways to fight us. And they want to know who we are. Then, um, then here they say that they want to get into the, you know, go into uh, the mayor's office, for instance, and say, hey, you know, we want you on our side, Mr. or Ms. Mayor. We want you to uh, fight these horrible people who are out there talking about how we don't want Plan Bay Area. We don't want regional plans that take away our sovereignty. We don't want to be governed by unelected boards and commissions. So they're saying to the planners, hey, it's up to you to go in there and educate your elected officials and tell them how to you know, redirect us, to quiet us down, to knock us out. And um, they want to, you know, make sure that they get the right rhetoric. They want to make sure that they are, uh, you know, manipulated correctly. And this is a big money thing. There's a lot of money involved in this. There's a lot of time, a lot of effort involved in trying to reframe planning so that it sounds like something that the entire town would want. And uh, because they were completely bowled over by us in the, uh, you know, around 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. Uh, when Trump got elected, I think a lot of people went away. They just said, okay, things are okay now, we're gonna quit. No, things are not okay. It's all still happening. And uh, this is what you need to fight is uh, that this stuff is going on whether you're at your Zoom meeting or not. This is going on right now. This is sustainable development, Agenda 21, happening right now in your town. There's a lot of money being distributed right now. There's a lot of, um, you know, there's there are plans and projects being approved right now on Zoom that you have no idea exist. You're not going down to the planning the planning department. You're not going to the planning commission. You're not going to city council anymore. And they're doing a lot of stuff behind your back. So uh, you need to know what's going on. And I, the reason I'm making this video is I want you to understand that this is a plan that has a lot of money and a lot of clout behind it. There are people who have every every intent, every intention of making sure that you don't have any influence on what happens in your life. And, uh, you know, here's a short short shorthand version of the, um, of the Green New Deal that I wrote that I think you sh you'd love to read. It's interesting, it really lays it out, and it basically tells you what effect this is going to have on your town. Because these things are not just federally funded crazy things by AOC or something. This actually has some effect on you in your city. So take a look at what's going on in your own town because that's where you are gonna be the most effective. And then learn how to fight. And we do help you with that. My book is you know, really actually a very good way to do it. But of course, right now it's much harder because your government is hiding from you through these Zoom meetings. So come and take a look and think about what's going on in your life. Think about the real 
thing that's happening. It's not necessarily about that mask. It's really about the big green mask. And that's what's going on in your life. Let's fight it together. We can win. Thank you.